guys, so welcome or welcome back to my channel. This video is going to talk about 10 things that will hopefully help you in making your decision about going to King's or making your decision about application processes of accommodation or just general life as a student in London. So I would also like to add before I get started that I have also been getting questions about the application process on how to get into King's and like extracurriculars etc because that video will be coming in three weeks so stay tuned and make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell to get notifications for my videos so let's get started Congrats on getting into university <laughs> and you should be proud of yourself and considering the corona we're very unsure at the moment of what's happening but hopefully you will be able to start your uni year like a normal uni student in September and that it won't be online because I'm not gonna lie it really sucks. But anyways, so I hope you like Kings as much as I do and living in London as much as I do. So you're obviously going to study in London and maybe you're watching this before having been accepted. So in that case, good luck to you. But if you have been accepted, have your mindset on going to London and more specifically going to Kings, I just want to confirm that you have already accepted that you are not going to be in a campus uni. So like, you know, um, a classic campus university where everything is kind of around the same, on the same campus <laughs> and all the accommodation is on the same campus, the sports fields, the just everything in one area. King's is spread out on different campuses, so like basically just buildings in different areas. So some people don't fully realize that that's what the uni is like. Like they think about, oh, let's go. To, I'm go I want to go to King's. I want to go to UCL, LSE, um, blah blah blah, SOAS, uh, Imperial. Just you know all these central London unis, but they don't fully think about like what type of uni experience they want. Of course you want to go to a very good uni, but you also have to think about your uni experience. You have to think about accommodation and where do you want to live in London. I've been getting a lot of questions about like, oh, Stamford Street or Moonraker or Julian Markham or Moonraker or Atlas or Moonraker, etc. Or then intercollegiate halls. I don't actually know enough about intercollegiate halls. I do know obviously you get to meet people from other unis and most of them are catered as well, which is handy for a lot of people. Um, however, I love my experience at King's Accommodation and I think that it's great as like an extra helping hand to like fully immerse yourself into the uni experience and like if you're moving away from home for the first time which a lot of you will be or if you're just like nervous about being in a new city i think like being in holes is a great thing the location of your accommodation so if you have the opportunity i know many people might not but if you do have the opportunity live as close to uni as possible and that is not a overreaction. Well, I'm talking about myself personally. If I wasn't in 25 minutes walking distance from uni, I would not have been showing up. Let's be honest. <laughs> and um, I think, well, okay, I was like a 30 minute walk from uni maybe. I've given a whole tour of Moonraker Point and a bit of the surroundings so you can see what it's like to live there. Um, however, I think that the key point there is obviously the location. If you look at Stamford Street Apartments, SSA, it is much closer. You literally roll out of bed and you're on Waterloo campus, but then you have to look at do you want to live in a nicer place or in Stamford Street Apartments? And from what I've heard, they aren't exactly the best. So again, it's up to you. For myself personally, location, bathroom, and double bed. Next thing is what type of room to choose when you are doing your application. I wanted a bathroom, no matter what. So if that is one of your priorities too, obviously, without a doubt, you're going for ensuite or studio. So that eliminates the normal room. 
So then you have to think about whether or not you want to share a kitchen. If you don't mind sharing a kitchen, go en suite. And if you really want your own space, go studio. The choice is really as simple as that. I think that you just have to look at your priorities and then also how much you want to socialize. Obviously you have plenty of socializing opportunities even if you're in a studio, but it's just that first week, freshers week, and then um, the week after that maybe if you're a bit slower at making friends or like you haven't really met anyone on your course it's just so much easier if you're sharing a flat with someone okay I wonder who my flatmates are gonna be that's always like the tricky question like are you gonna get along with them but it's just important to remember that at least you have some people to go out with in the beginning and then you can just move on from there so socializing well, don't you worry. I think that all student accommodation is very social and I think that is one of the perks of being in student accommodation because again, if you live by yourself, you have to like obviously have made these friends to invite you to things. Whereas if you're in student accommodation, you're automatically having prees with everyone. Maybe your flatmate or the flat across from you is throwing a party. You all end up going to the same night out together. So there is always someone to go out with and there is always something going on in London. Like there is every single night of the week there's something going on student-wise or normal London club-wise. So you don't really have to worry about that at all. For that reason, you have chosen the right city to study in. The only thing is obviously it is more expensive to go out. So I know people that go to uni in other parts of the UK and then also in Ireland and they're obviously having a much cheaper student experience than I am. So that is something to take into account and you really need to budget for that. So, I mean, if you love partying, you can have the best time in London. So another question I got was, and well, this is obviously a hard question to answer because everyone obviously has a different experience. With regards to city life, it's great. I mean, there's nothing I'd really complain about about London. It's just like a really nice place to live because there's always something to do. You're not confined by being in a rural area or a smaller place where your uni is the only thing in that town because then you have to depend on student nights or like the student bar or the same people all the time. So I think that, that in that way, London is a good place because you can always spread out, do your own thing, meet new people, um, like socialize with different people. There's so many opportunities to do different things and I bet there's like so many things that I don't even know about. So like there's always something to do and there's loads of pages as well, like students nights out pages or like, like what to do on a Wednesday night in London or like events today and blah, blah, blah. Then I've gotten this question a number of times about applying to the King's accommodation. Well, when I applied two years ago, I did not have that much of a complicated process. It seems as though they really expect you to like apply in detail at the moment. We were just allowed to choose the room size, I'm pretty sure. So you guys are obviously being given the choice to choose a floor and things like that. I lived on the fifth floor, which was the highest floor in Moonraker with a balcony. So I personally loved that because when it was sunny, you could sit on your balcony and stuff without a roof over your head. I liked my floor, so you know what? I had a great experience in 149C at Moonraker Point. So go ahead and get that flat. Also, there are different blocks in Moonraker as I explained in my video so just go ahead and watch that video but there are like about four to six flats on every floor and um, some flats have eight people and some flat flats have four people and that's a quick summarized version so obviously it just depends on how high up you want to be and that's just it. Then another question I got was there were a lot of British students in my year at Moonraker and there are a lot of British students in general at King's so if you'd rather be socializing with British people, that's great for you. But again, I can't really tell you that your year will have loads of British people because you never know what your year will be like. So I hope you get what you want. But it's always nice to have like a variety of people because then who knows who you'll better get along with. But you will always find your group. Don't worry about that. So then I also got this question about um, the view. You ain't getting a view. <laughs> I hate to break it to you. I was in block B 
and our one of the corner flats had the view of the shard and obviously if you're in a higher floor you get a bit of a skyline view I suppose as much as you can get but with regards to best block I really like block B because it was where the post boxes the laundry everything was so I didn't really have to move from it um, and then there's the reception if you need anything it is also quite a lenient accommodation with regards to um, security and having friends over or people over because I know in some other accommodations like when going there for pre's or afterwards they literally like sign everyone in you can only have two guests per person blah 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 it's just a whole hassle at Moonraker I never had a problem with that no one ever seemed to have a problem with that people always had people over so I think it's just like a very social accommodation in that retrospect so ideal number of flatmates I think the more the merrier um, as in like obviously you want less because you might not want to share your kitchen with as many people or it might be less messy blah 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 but I think that obviously if you have more people you have a bigger kitchen so that kind of weighs itself out and then obviously the more people you have the bigger pool of people you have to be friends with is how I see it so you won't or very rarely get along with all your flatmates and you might be friends with them in the beginning and not in the end but I think that if you have seven or eight flatmates the likelihood of you making at least one friend out of that is much higher than if you had three or four flatmates. So I think that's all I wanted to mention on this like short Kings video. Uh, hopefully that helps a bit more on your application process for accommodation and on um, what it's like to live in London. I think you're gonna have a great time. Obviously everyone's personality is different. Um, King's is a very competitive uni, but I found I had so much free time, so you really have a lot of free time to explore London as well. And I really hope you have a great time. Good luck with your application process. Again, if you want to ask me any questions, here's my Insta, or you can comment down below. And make sure to press that subscribe button, of course. And give me a thumbs up. Bye!